If you're like me, you may have heard about food that is irradiated to make it safer and extend shelf life. Beyond that, do we really know if irradiating food is safe and effective? I recently visited the food science labs at Chapman University and spoke with Professor Anu Prakash. She's internationally recognized for her research in food irradiation. This is a great setup you have here, all oranges. But I think we're going to talk about more than oranges today. We're going to talk about food radiation. My patients ask me about this all the time. There's a lot of confusion about it, but why don't you explain simply what food radiation is? Radiation of food is the treatment of food with ionizing energy. The reason we treat food with radiation is to destroy microorganisms that can cause disease, like certain bacteria, mm -hmm. E. coli, salmonella. Also, the industry agriculture could use it to destroy insects and um, prevent sprouting and in some cases also extend shelf life. When you tr treat the irradiated food, the food lasts longer because it changes the structure of the food or because it changes the back kills the bacteria that may cause spoilage, or does it do both? When we treat food with radiation, the energy passes through the food and hits all the molecules that are present in the food. Now microorganisms, insects, they have DNA, mm -hmm. and when radiant energy hits DNA, it damages it. Uh, microorganisms are not able to multiply. Insects uh, might be destroyed or sterilized. It affects the DNA of the fruit itself, but the fruit is not trying to multiply anymore. But insects and microorganisms are not able to survive the stress of radiation and they die. And what about viruses like the hepatitis, hepatitis A, is that, is that affected by this? It, not as much as bacteria. For viruses, we need a much higher level of energy. Now, where is this being used? Is it used throughout the world now? And where in the United States is it used? It's used worldwide. worldwide. Uh, it's used in many countries around the world. In the US, we use it primarily for spices and herbs. Uh, you might know that spices are very heavily contaminated, mm -hmm. often because they're dried out in the open and there's birds and animals that contaminate the food. And uh, radiation is very highly effective because you can radiate large container foods. We also use it for uh, food products. I'd like to show you. This is a ground beef package that has oh, been treated with radiation, and it has on it the radiation symbol. And the has symbol a, right here is a radiation That's exactly symbol. right. This is a, called a radura, and it tells the consumer that the product has been treated with radiation and explains that the product has been treated to improve food safety. Now, this will not affect the taste of the food? Absolutely not. So they have done consumer tests mm -hmm. and there is no difference between uh, fruit, that, food that has been treated with radiation and not been treated with radiation. So there's no difference in the taste? How about nutritional value, vitamins, minerals, the fat content? Does any of that change when you do this? As with any processing, there might be some effects on nutritional uh, value yeah. It depends on the nutrient, and it also depends on the food. So, for example, if you measure the vitamin C in broccoli that has mm -hmm. been treated with radiation and not, there's no difference at all. And actually, broccoli is a very rich source of vitamin C. But when we've done the same work with spinach, in that case, the vitamin C seems to be a little bit more sensitive to mm -hmm. radiation. Regardless, the reduction in vitamin C is far less than any other treatment, any other processing that you would do to food. Okay, so you do beef, you do, these are... Um, this is a package of mangoes from mm -hmm. India that were imported into the U.S. and the only way that they can be imported is if they are treated with radiation. And so you can see again that it has the symbol, the radura symbol, uh, again, letting consumers know that this product has been treated with radiation. So in the United States, what, what foods do we uh, irradiate? We treat spices, herbs, ground beef. We do a lot of pet treats because they are heavily contaminated with salmonella. And the concern is for safety of our pets, but also for children who sometimes might feed the treats to their dogs and then put their fingers into their mouth. Okay. And it seems to me the big, when I, when I talk to my patients, the big scare is they think they're going to get radiation from food that has been treated with radiation. We can say unequivocally that you will not get any radiation from 
irradiated food. That's exactly right. So when we take this orange and take it through a radiation chamber, the energy goes through this orange just as the light goes through this orange, but there's no more light left after it has been treated. So there's no radiation energy left in this fruit after it's been treated. If we were to use a scintillator counter or a Geiger counter to measure radiation on the surface of this fruit, it would be the same before and after. Fantastic. So I guess you have food that's been radiated and not radiated here, and I can taste some, perhaps? Absolutely. Let me try. I'm, I'm going to guess which one has been treated. This is a I'm project a, that a we professional have taster. funded by the USDA, the Foreign Agricultural Service. So these look the same. Tastes great. And Fresh navel oranges Fantastic. from California. You couldn't tell one from the other. The taste, the consistency, the sweetness, the color is all absolutely the same. Were you able to tell a difference in acidity? No, I, I couldn't tell. They, I would think they came from the same exact fruit. Which one is which? This is the control, and this is the one that has been treated with radiation. The dose we use is 400 gray, which is the allowed dose to destroy insects in oranges. That's um, fantastic. We've done consumer work with these oranges, and our consumers are not able to tell any difference between yep. the treated and There's the non-treated. There's no way you can tell with this. Thank you very much. Thank very you. informative. We are now joined with Dr. Prakash. Thanks for having me in the lab. I really learned a lot. The thing that I don't understand is the cost. We know it's safe and we know it's effective, but is cost a holdback for this technology? Cost is a factor. Right now, we treat many products with radiation spices, for example. Mm -hmm. They're the largest volume of product. And because of the volume, cost has been reduced because of economies of scale. For other products, it can add a few cents per pound. But as the volume of product that we treat increases, the cost should go down as well. Now, in the past years, there's been these outbreaks of E. coli, which I imagine are very expensive. Can you comment on E. coli in, in particular? Yes, um, recent E. coli outbreaks, like the 2006 spinach outbreak, killed a number of people. It was a multi-state outbreak, sickened hundreds of people. This is, of course, the lives that are lost, people that are sickened, and also companies put out of business. So it's uh, expensive uh, in many ways, uh, you know, in cost of human lives and then, of course, uh, economy as well. So really, the industry, if they look at it in the whole, the whole picture, is probably cost effective. I mean, if you have one E. coli outbreak, that's the end of, that could be the end of your company, and it might be really worthwhile to do this. Absolutely. We sterilize instruments in the, in the hospital. I do lots of procedures, and there's some of the things that we use over and over. Is this technology used for that? Yeah, in fact, a lot of the facilities that treat food products also treat medical devices. That might be a quite a significant fact, uh, amount of their business. They treat bandages, gauzes, um, stents, mm. um, any medical device that gets put inside the body because this is a way to sterilize 100% um, these medical devices without the use of heat. Because heat may be damaged. It the, the, the material. Uh, but this does not damage the material. The packages that you have here are quite interesting. Can you explain these to me? Yes, these are entrees that have been treated for, uh, by radiation for NASA. So a number of the entrees that NASA uses for astronauts up in space have been treated with radiation to make sure that they're free of any disease-causing bacteria. Mm. And uh, any retail product uh, that has been treated with radiation also has this radura symbol mm -hmm. on it and the words treated by radiation so a consumer can tell when the product has been treated. And uh, what is the shelf life of this? How long will this last? This product has a shelf life as uh, with all NASA entrees of three years at room temperature. Wow. And I imagine this is important to them so they probably really taste good, huh? Yes, NASA does extensive sensory testing of their products to, because also astronauts lose their sense of taste up in space. Yeah. So they want to make oh, sure the right? food yeah. tastes good and is nutritious. So if it's safe for NASA, it's safe for us. Yeah.